Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. It's a new day and we give thanks to God for counting us among the living to see another day. We welcome you to our daily devotion. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we give thanks to you for the opportunity to still be in the land of the living. And we thank you because we want to meditate on your word. We ask that you will grant us insight and understanding and the things which we hear we pray that you will help us to apply into our hearts and may we continue to work with them. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For our meditation this morning, we're reading from Zechariah chapter 6 from verse 11. Zechariah 6 from verse 11. Take the silver and gold and make a crown and set it on the head of the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak. Tell him, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch, and he will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. It is he who will build the temple of the Lord, and he will be clothed with majesty and will sit and rule on his throne. And he will be a priest on his throne, and there will be harmony between the two. The crown will be given to Heldai, Tobijah, Jediah, and Hen, son of Zephaniah, as a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Those who are far away will come and help to build the temple of the Lord. And you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. This will happen if you diligently obey the Lord your God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The topic for our meditation this morning says, We have been made kings and priests. We have been made kings and priests. In our text, the Lord commanded Zechariah to collect silver and gold from Helda, Tobea, and Jediah, who had returned from the exile in Babylon. The silver and the gold that were to be collected were to be used to make a crown. Now these are two metals which have great richness in them. And these two metals were to be used to make a crown, and the crown was to be placed on the head of Joshua the priest. Looking at this passage very well, you discover that in the history of the Israelite, no king had performed the function of a priest. Joshua at this point was to be coronated and given a crown which were made from the silver and the gold that had been collected from the exiles from Babylon. And what were the significance of this? Briefly before we look at the significance, if you look at the history of the Israelite again, you discover that no king ever served as a priest. Samuel, when he was the leader of the children of Israel, he anointed Saul to be the king of the nation of Israel. And at the point when they were to go to war against the Philistines, the pressure was on much on Saul, who decided to perform the function of a priest. And when Samuel came, he rebuked him and told him, the Lord had taken away the kingdom from him. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 13, you see the story there. Also in 2 Chronicles 26, we read of Uzziah, who, when he was king of Judah, had become so powerful, and at a point he felt he could enter the temple and offer sacrifices and burn incense. The priest, Azariah, at that time, with 40 other priests who were so courageous, had to rebuke him for having done so. And because he did that, the Lord struck him with leprosy, and he died of leprosy. So in the nation of Israel, no, but no priest had performed the function of a king, neither had the king performed the function of a priest. 
So at this point, God asking Zechariah to do this was to place the crown on the head of Joshua. It was a uniting force between the monarchy and the kingship, the monarchy and the throne. So the altar and the temple were united. And what was the significance of this? When he did this, he was placed on the head of Joshua. And the crown was not left there. The crown was taken out and was to be placed in the temple as a memorial. The Lord told Zechariah that this that had been done was to be for the man who is the branch. Who is the branch. And what the branch does he refer to? That was referring to Jesus who was going to serve as both king and priest over the nation. Now, if you look at that passage very well, he said, and the two, there will be harmony between the two. The crown will be given to Helda, Tobijah, Jediah, and Hen, son of Zephaniah, as a memorial in the temple of the Lord. It was to be a memorial. And the message that God had for the Israelites was that someone was going to come who would perform this function of both the priest and the king. For our topic this morning, we are being made kings and priests. How does that apply to us? Our Savior Jesus, when he came to the face of the earth and he ruled over his disciples and walked on the face of the earth, he told them before he ascended in Matthew 28 verse 18 that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And this authority, they are to use it. If you read Revelation Chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. He said, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. So, God had not just done this for Christ, but he had done it for us as believers. If you believe in Jesus, if you have accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior, then there is an authority that has been given to you to perform the function of a priest and that of a king. In 1 Peter, we are told that we are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a holy nation, a people that have been called out of darkness to show forth its marvelous light. Brethren, we have been given authority. We have been made kings and priests, and God expects us to carry out this function every day of our life ruling and having dominion over every place where he has placed us. But eventually you are in a place and you do not understand the authority that God had given to you. From the very beginning when he created man, he created him with that authority. And what is the authority? To rule, to dominate, to subdue all that God had created. And so this authority, God expects us to make use of them all to the glory of his own name. We have been made kings and priests. You do not need to shy away from your responsibility as a child of God. As a child of God, that authority is vested on you and you are to use that authority. You don't need to be afraid of principalities and powers. You don't need to be afraid of demonic oppression. Christ is there interceding for us. And he has given us that power to also continue to intercede, to pray and make way where there seems to be no way. The authority to rule, if you read Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, he said all authority has been given to him and he has come to set the captives free, to set those who are held in bondage all through their lives free. So we are to use that authority for as many who are held bound by demonic oppression. We are to set them free. We are also to rule wherever he has placed us. We are to speak his word to the hearts of men. And the word of God is what can bring change and transformation to the souls of men. We trust that the Lord will grant us the grace to be able to do this everywhere we find ourselves in the name of Jesus. Brethren, God is counting on you as a believer. Don't 
shy away from that which he has called you into. As a priest, you are to offer daily sacrifices to him. You are to submit your life to him. You are to walk in the path he wants you to walk. Because the work of a priest is not the work you do the way you want to do it. The work of a priest demands that you do it with the whole of your heart, with every commitment. And even before you do it, yourself must be kept pure. You must consecrate yourself and submit yourself wholly to the Lord. And as a king, you are to rule. What is that thing that is ruling over you? What is that thing that has held you bound? God has made you a king and a priest to serve the Lord. If you do not understand your authority, then you will continue to miss out of that which God has called you. But when you understand that you are a king, wherever you go, you live and walk like a king. A king is someone who has an area where he rules and dominates. God expects you in that little area where he has placed you to rule and dominate. Don't allow the enemy to keep putting you to shame. Don't allow him to keep making you look as if you do not know your God. Remember the words of Daniel. They that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. So if you know your God and you know the authority has vested upon you as a king and as a priest, then you will carry that authority and go to wherever the Lord wants you to go. Brethren, as we walk through this day, this 27th day in this month of August, we pray that the Lord will grant us grace to walk in that path and to continue to dominate everywhere he wants us to be. In our prayer here in the Daily Fountain, it says, Father, let every evil force militating against your kingdom in my heart and your purpose for my life be destroyed today by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give thanks to you once again for your word we have heard. Your word is life and your word is power. We pray that your word will not return to you void without accomplishing the purpose for which you have sent it. May your word have its place in our lives, and may your name always be glorified. Thank you because today we will enjoy your peace, we will enjoy your favor, and we will rule and dominate everything that has held us bound, having understood that which you have made us to be. May your Holy Spirit continue to help us to walk with the authority of a king and the authority of a priest. Thank you, Father, because we know you will do this for us all to the glory of your own name. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 